Stephen Fouget, and I'm preparing a PhD with the University of Grenoble and with STA microelectronics in France. So for this presentation, I will talk about the debugger support I developed to support parallel, parallel component-based application in embedded system based on GDB Python interface. So first of all, a few words about the industrial context. So in my division at ST, we currently have for high resolution multimedia application which have high performance expectation like the next video decoder, H265 or augmented reality application. And as it's frequent in a limited system, we need to meet sharp time to market constraints in order to be competitive. So this brings a development demand for powerful architectures which is currently answered by multiprocessor and chip. But we also need convenient programming methodologies to program this architecture where one solution is component-based of swine engineering. And to meet the time to market constraints, we need efficient verification and validation tools, and that's our problematic today. So I mentioned that the process on chip, but I'm not sure that it's well known outside of the embedded system world. So here are a few more details. It's a parallel, parallel architecture, so it's usually more difficult to program than sequential platforms. And it may be heterogeneous with hardware accelerators and GPU-like computing fabrics, which are OSFS. And it's usually running as an embedded system, so in a constrained environment where onboard debugging is quite complicated because of the OS, if any, and the, the remote access. So usually it's mainly for performance debugging. And the functional debugging will be done on simulators at a limited scale. I also mentioned the component based software engineering. It's a methodology which emphasizes the design of independent building blocks and where applications are built by interconnecting such blocks in any component. And this allows the adaptation of the application architecture to the runtime constraints. And if the components are designed as renewable, the, the application will be able to leverage the MPSAC parallelism. So the rest of this presentation will be organized as follows. I will start by presenting the challenges faced during the debugging of component-based application, and I introduce the solution we provide to lighten this problem with a component-aware interactive debugger. Then I go in some more details about the feature we can provide and I explain how we implemented the debugger with GDP Python interface and I finally complete this story. So the main difficulty of component-based application is that they are inherently dynamic. So if we we can have this kind of application architecture at the first breakpoint stop, but at the next one some links may have been disconnected or an entire, an entire component may have been removed from the component graph. Another difficulty is that the component will have to interact with one, with one another. And in this, in this situation, if we consider that the developer will be interested in following the purple message uh, during the this change from the pink component to the blue one, then the, the execution will be hindered by a significant number of framework dependent steps. And if the components are not running in the same execution context, it gets even worse and it becomes virtually impossible for the developer to follow the exchange. And finally, and certainly as in any, any application, there will be a complex flow of information over the components. So here, if we consider the green component to be faulty and correcting the messages it processes, then an application, an application architecture reconfiguration may occur between the corruption time and the crash time. And in this case, the developer will consider the blue component to be faulty instead of the green one. So to lighten this problem, we propose a component-aware interactive debugger where the main objective is to bring the debugger
debugger closer to the programming model. So it means that the debugger should be able to show the architecture, the application architecture evolutions, like the deployment of new components or the creation of new interface bindings. But also the developer should be able to follow easily the execution, the execution flow of a, the, the component graph, like the execution, uh, like an execution triggered by an interface call or the triggering of a reliable component. And finally, you should be able to track the data exchanges between the component and see the root history of a message or set breakpoints based on interface activity or messages. The main principle of the implementation relies on the detection and interpretation of the key events of the component framework. So here, during this initialization step, the component aware debugger will register an interest on the creation of a new component, which will be translated by the source level debugger, GDB in our case, in an execution breakpoint. And the same applies for interface binding events and component execution. Then, after this initialization phase, the user will register here, for instance, an interest on stopping the execution on component execution and trigger the start of the execution. And the order will be transmitted all the way down to the execution platform. Then the platform will import a breakpoint, which will be translated by the source of a debugger into the component creation event. And in this case, the component of a debugger will create the host component. Then the execution will be continued. Another event is reported, which corresponds to the first component, and so on and so forth. So here are the second component, and the same applies for interface bindings. And finally, when the, the execution reports the event corresponding to the to component execution, the control gets back to the user for the first time. So before going, before going further with the feature details, I would like to present the environment in which I developed the proof of concept. So Platform 2012 is ST internal research platform for MPSOC systems. It's heterogeneous with an ARM processor on the host side and a cluster of simple processing elements on the fabric side. Then NPM, Native Programming Model, is the name of the component framework developed to exploit B2012 architecture. And it provides the communication component as well as the, interf the, the interfaces and an API for the host to control the deployment of the components. And we use GDB as the source of that debugger because it's well adapted to low level debugging and it has a large user community. And we built our extension with the Python interface. And I must emphasize that in this work, we only use platform simulators for P2012 because the heterogeneity is cannot, cannot easily be handled yet by GDB and it was easier for the work. So the application we had to develop was a feature tracker which is part of an augmented reality application. Um, the aim of the feature tracker is to follow the motion of interesting points, so for example here, the car, which has been followed in the next image of the video to this point. And the application is divided into three components, one running on the first side, and the two others running on the dedicated cluster of the fabric. So in this slide, we can see the state of the application somewhere near the middle of its execution, where we can see that two components were currently running, one on the host side and one on the fabric, and they were connected by two interfaces. Then I wanted to highlight the message tracking capabilities. So in this situation, if we consider the purple message being translated from the component A to the component B, then the debugger will detect each 
set update change and provide it to the user for conditional breakpoints or just for information. So the different steps was the different steps messages created, sent and received were defined by some framework API and correspond to message lifecycle events. And here the developer can also provide routing table based on the component internal logic and the, the application architecture state so that the debugger can aggregate logically the, the identical messages and this way the developer will be able to see the entire message route. So a last example, I wanted to show that uh, the debugger can provide information about uh, the interface activity and in this case, this information allowed us to discover a bug in the feature tracker where all the interfaces were supposed to work in a lockstep fashion, receive a message, process it and send it back. But there was uh, the temporary interface was one step forward and the final one was one step late. So one message was sent to the wrong interface. Um, that's the last pixel of the, the image, which are part of the corner case treatment of the algorithm. So now I would like to present the, how we implemented this debugger based on the device interface. I mentioned earlier that the key principle is to detect and interpret the events of the component framework. So the detection is based on internal breakpoints which are made totally invisible to the user by HDB, so no apparent execution stop and no screen notification. And this gives us Python notification for the framework events. So these events correspond to creation, to component creation and execution, interface binding, but also component creation, uh, sending and receiving. Um, this fast class of breakpoint may be triggered a large number of time in the communication intensive application. So we make it easy for the developer to disable the message tracking capabilities and enable it only for the sensible parts of the application. And finally, the interpretation is based on the standard dwarf information as well as the API and the current conventions. And I must confess that some implementation dependent bits remain in the, in the implementation, but I assume that this kind of debugger module is supposed to be developed in cooperation between the framework team and the debugging team, so it should be easy to develop a standard interface to facilitate the communication. So I would like to present the toolbox I developed to catch all of this information. And the first one is the function breakpoint, which are internal breakpoints trigger at the entry and return point of the framework functions. And they allow us to catch the input updated and, and output parameters of the function. So here, triple before will be stopped before the execution of the function and it must return the an indicator to to know if we must stop at the trigger after callback and if some data have to be transmitted from the entry to the return point. And to catch the return point, a uh, line implementation will do it with HDB execute finish command, but the documentation explicitly states that you're not supposed to alter the execution state of the inferior. So I developed the GDB finish breakpoint class to support this functionality, which is based on the equivalent command line finish. So here is an illustration of the purpose of the function breakpoint. The component handle won't be populated until the return of the function, but we must transmit the type and number of processors in order to have all the information about the components. Then we face a difficulty during this project with the multi-threading of the simulator which is implemented at user level. So we can see in the left, we can see in this diagram what it means in terms of runtime entities. 
So on the left hand side, we can see that the multi threading is implemented at the kernel level. So there are multiple AWPs owned by the process, and GDB can query the kernel about these AWPs to have information about the threads. And the cooperation with the GFC will provide the further detail about the user downside of the thread application. On the other side, you can see that the multi-threading is done on the user alarm, and there is only one AWP for, for, the, for the application. So only one component will be running at a given time, and the context of the other threads will be stored in memory. So GDB can detect natively this kind of multi-threading, and it will only display the thread currently running. So, Currently, there is no way to group GDB internal thread, uh, thread mechanisms, but it's possible to re-implement re it in Python. So the first step is to save the, the, the execution context of the current thread. So it means reading the location of the, of the current frame and the execution pointer. Then switching to an inactive thread corresponds to setting back the registers saved from the jump buffer in memory. And finally, before restarting the execution, we need to reload the execution context in its initial stage by setting back the correct CPU registers. We can see this slide uh, on the top hand some of the processors of the the simulator and the list of some of the threads. So here, the thread number two was currently selected in GDB, whereas the, the component one and three are running but not selected. However, the component four and five currently don't have an infection context. So if we switch to an inactive component, then the backtrace will show that this component was unscheduled why it was fetching its next buffer. So this threading mechanism is far from being perfect. It's quite implementation dependent and there is no coordination with GDB's threading capabilities. But at least it shows that the core functionalities have already been implemented in Python. Um, I think that the cooperation with the ThreadDB thread library, like user level ThreadDB, user level thread DB that I detailed in an article earlier to make the, the, thread, the user thread debugging more standard and reliable. So once we are able to distinguish one thread from another and one processor from another, we can start tracking the activity of the different components. And the first task corresponds to identifying the current operation and its parameter. So the operation will be returned by the location of the breakpoint. We'll be able to inter interpret the API par the, the parameters based on the API, and we internally use lookup tables to match the component handle and get back the Python object for the component. Then we need to identify the component uh, doing the operation and that's based on the current processor or if the component is not running yet with framework data structures. And finally, we need to update the, the internal state, state of the module. So in this case, we'll have to create a new binding between two components because it was the component binding event. And before we start restarting the execution, we need to check for a user breakpoint to decide whether we need to stop the execution or not. So, as a conclusion, I wanted to come back on the fact that debugging dynamic component application is quite challenging today, and that's mainly due to the fact, not mainly, but, uh, in part due to the fact that debuggers do not account for high level information about the component frameworks. So, our work tries to bring the debugger closer to the component programming model so that the developers can have a better understanding of the application behavior 
and keep focus on their bug tracking activity instead of fighting with runtime libraries. And the proof of concept was developed with GDB and its Python interface. And I think it shows that the interface is today mature enough and reliable enough to be a real improvement in Python. And there were a few missing bits which were contributed to the project for supporting this module, like the finished breakpoint class I mentioned earlier, but also compact also notification for multiple breakpoint bits or getter for the selected inferior. Um, we believe that programming model over debugging is an interesting direction which was being further investigated and we try to apply it with OpenCL uh, for GPU programming and data flow execution model. Thanks for your attention. If you have any questions.
convertint en recés de Déu. Ah, sí.
horrible, but it's not the same anymore. But the thing is, the CCP thing is fair. It's compared to the Telegram. It's a good thing. I mean, is it right now? Yeah, we're not talking about it. Except, except. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. 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 Thinking about it, yeah, we can see that. There are lots of people that still don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but some of us don't know that they 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 don't Thank you.